Hello everyone, we are again back for the course heat exchangers, fundamentals and design analysis. If you recall, we were looking into a special class of heat exchangers that is micro heat exchangers. Uh, let me uh, recapitulate very quickly, micro heat exchangers are heat exchangers whose passages are very narrow and uh, they are so small that sometimes the uh, fluid flow and heat transfer phenomena follow a physics different from that which we generally encounter in conventional heat exchangers or in passages uh, which are having large dimension, large dimensions. Now, uh, for this uh, then one thing we have to be a uh, little bit conversant that is micro scale heat transfer. So, micro scale heat transfer is a topic which is very vast and there are many, many aspects. So, we have very briefly looked into convection, uh, forced convection particularly in micro channels or micro passages. So, there will be issues like sleep, there will be issues like uh, temperature jump, viscous dissipation uh, cannot be neglected as we often neglect it in case of uh, flow through conventional size pa passages. So, with all these things <coughs> the relationship for pressure drop and heat transfer that becomes different. So, that is what I have explained in my earlier lecture, we have taken some example also to see how it is different. And then I have told that there are large number of correlations, some theories also which one can employ. Uh, this is a um, uh, class or this is a course of heat exchanger, here we cannot take care of micro scale heat transfer to the fullest extent. So, only briefly I have mentioned that whenever this kind of topic comes or whenever an engineer is supposed to design micro scale uh, heat exchangers, micro heat exchangers, then he has to be little bit careful. <coughs> he has to look for this kind of information, he should not jump into the design analysis which already he is conversant uh, for the design of uh, conventional heat exchangers. So, this is the thing which I have uh, covered in our uh, last few lectures and then I have shown some sort of uh, micro channels, uh, one or two examples of micro channels and then I have told that particularly gas flow we are concerned because uh, many of the attributes which we, which we call the attributes of microfluidics that is uh, found during gas flow through narrow sized uh, narrow channels or micro channels. Some classifications etcetera we have told some non dimensional numbers we have um, introduced and then we are almost towards the end of this discussion. Now, we like to see some heat exchangers which are micro heat exchangers, some attributes again uh, due to um, uh, due to the paucity of time as we have to cover many other topics. So, we will be very brief and some typical heat exchanger I will show you and discuss their speciality as micro heat exchangers. <laughs> Let us first look into this diagram which has been taken from a source from a paper and here <coughs> two things are given that is area density and uh, hydraulic diameter and then different type of heat exchangers which are commonly in use in engineering practice are shown here. So, uh, we can see cell and tube heat exchanger which is uh, one of the oldest type heat exchanger, very common heat exchanger. So, obviously, it is area density will be low and its hydraulic diameter will be high. So, here we can get it. Then we can have compact uh, cell and tube heat exchanger, plate heat exchangers, uh, <coughs> braised plate heat, ex heat exchangers etcetera. So, where we are having a smaller hydraulic diameter. Then there are certain overlapping region where uh, uh, different kind of heat exchanger come. <coughs> So, what we are having <coughs> plate fin heat exchangers, so compactness has increased. So, I have told for uh, gas flow the uh, area density that is meter square per meter cube 
area density per unit volume. If that crosses a number 700 roughly, then we call it compact heat exchanger. So, you see it falls in the compact heat exchanger region that is PH, F, uh, PFHE plate fin heat exchanger. And uh, I think some discussion regarding plate fin heat exchanger has already been given in this course. Then we have got PCHE. <coughs> so, this is again another kind of uh, heat exchanger, printed circuit heat exchanger and that covers again a large range. Obviously, it, it covers also uh, the range of uh, um, uh, compact heat exchanger. And then we have got uh, uh, Marbond uh, heat exchanger, this is a special kind of heat exchanger, uh, this is made out of plate. So, it has got a lot of similarities or some similarities with uh, plate type heat exchanger and some similarity with uh, uh, <coughs> printed circuit heat exchanger. But um, the passages on the plate, they are made by photochemical etching, very special process. So, we can get even narrower passages and then they are uh, diffusion bonded or a suitable bonding te technique can be adopted. Then we are getting micro heat exchanger. So, micro heat exchanger you see the area density is very high. Uh, that means, uh, 20,000 meter square per meter cube very high um, um, uh, <coughs> area density and at the same time hydraulic diameter is also very small what we can see here that uh, the hydraulic diameter is very small. So, it is again not a very large range so far whatever micro heat exchanger has been developed. So, that does not cover a very large range, but the, this covers a very special range where we are having a very large um, uh, area density. This I have told number of times I like to uh, stress once again that micro heat exchangers and compact heat exchangers are basically having a very large amount of overlap. One can probably safely say that all micro heat exchangers are um, compact heat exchanger. Of course, there could be there could be uh, there could be some sort of exception, but uh, most of the cases micro heat exchangers are compact heat exchangers. But uh, at the same time, the compact heat exchanger, there could be very large compact heat exchanger like air separation plant, we can have a very large compact heat exchanger. In some clean energy system, we can have a very large uh, compact heat exchanger, whereas micro heat exchangers are small, they are of special type and they <coughs> handle very, very less amount of fluid, very less amount of fluid, fluid flow rate through the micro heat exchanger will be small. So, these are actually notional differences. Uh, obviously, the name which has been given from time to time to different types of heat exchangers uh, that uh, <coughs> well, um, so there could be some sort of a controversy. Even the ranges I have shown there could be some sort of a controversy. So, with this let us uh, go to different kind of uh, micro heat exchangers. This micro heat exchanger I have shown at the beginning of uh, this particular topic. So, this is a cell and tube micro heat exchanger or micro cell and tube heat exchangers. So, cell and tube heat exchangers uh, in micro scale are not very common, even compact cell and tube heat exchangers are also not very common, though there are certain design which can be called compact cell and tube heat exchanger, but this is a very unique um, example. This is a very unique example. The tubes are micro tubes, uh, they, they are diameter, you can see it is uh, 2 millimeter uh, diameter. So, this is really very small and one definition I have given uh, in uh, some of the earlier slides or earlier lecture that when the diameter is less than 3 millimeter, we can call it a micro. Uh, uh, micro heat exchanger or micro channel. So, in that way it <coughs> it uh, it is within that uh, within the scope of that definition. So, it is 2 millimeter diameter tube, very large number of tubes are there. So, if very large numbers of uh, large numbers of tubes are there 
very large number of tubes are there, then one can understand that the uh, flow passage between the tube that is also small. So, what we are getting? We are getting micro passage in the tube side and micro passage in the cell side also. So, uh, here we can see the cell side um, uh, passage is also very small. So, not only that the tube uh, dimension is very small that is made of it is made of special material like titanium and one can see some feature which is there in large uh, cell and tube heat exchanger that we have got the <coughs> we have got the baffles. So, that the cell side fluid it has to take a zigzag way like this. So, obviously, here <coughs> we can have uh, good amount of heat transfer within a compact volume within uh, by using a heat exchanger of small weight and at the same time one can expect very high rate high capacity of the heat exchanger. But one thing uh, I think it goes without saying, but I try to draw your attention as the passages are very narrow. So, there will be considerable amount of pressure drop. Okay. So, both the cell side and tube side there will be considerable amount of uh, pressure drop and another aspect again I like to impress uh, stress upon that point particular point that as the passages are narrow. So, the operation should be as far as practicable fouling free because if fouling is there and fouling is predominant then of course, uh, cleaning etcetera those issues will come and very quickly the heat exchanger uh, it will not be usable. So, uh, servicing is also difficult. So, these points we have to keep it in mind. <coughs> Here I like to say uh, again uh, which I have told earlier that circular micro passages are not very common, but this is one unique example where we have got a micro heat exchanger with circular passage also. Uh, Let us go to the next slide. Uh, this kind of configuration is quite common in micro heat exchanger. What configuration it is? That it will have number of parallel channels, number of parallel channels it will have. So, probably it will have a plate which we, we are going to see later on that on the plate there will be number of parallel channels parallel parallel channels cut and then on those parallel channels one can have uh, uh, through those parallel channels one can have uh, uh, <coughs> flow uh, through those parallel channels and uh, then what one can see that uh, surface area again is very large. But you see there is one issue over here that if we have to use the entire surface area uh, with equal effectiveness for heat transfer with equal uh, <coughs> capacity of heat transfer then we have to ensure that through each of the individual channel same amount of fluid through fluid passes or the flow distribution there are large number of channels let us say there are uh, many channels in this direction. So, they should fluid should pass uh, with uniform velocity or uniform flow rate uh, uh, for each of the channel that should be ensured that is very difficult to ensure because there will be one fluid inlet and one fluid outlet and due to the resistance of the flow path some of the some of the channel will get more fluid flow and some of the channel will get less fluid flow. So, this one can call as maldistribution of fluid. Maldistribution of fluid that is there or maldistribution of flow that is there in large size heat exchangers also, but <coughs> the problem is more accurate uh, sorry more acute in case of small heat exchangers or micro heat exchangers. So, that is why people design different kind of um, different kind of planum, uh, different kind of header uh, for uh, the uh, for the incoming and outgoing fluid. So, uh, then we, we can have uh, some remedy for the maldistribution. 
if we consider uh, let us say this is the inlet this is the outlet uh, ok before that let me tell you that three configuration whatever you are seeing this is from a research paper whose reference is given. So, here it shows the uh, numerical modeling computational modeling. So, how the flow distribution is taking place. So, that has been described over here. So, here you see uh, three different cases are there and three different header design for inlet and outlet it is there. So, now if we consider the resistance let us say we are considering this particular channel. So, then the fluid is coming over here. So, here it has to cover a small path then it passes through the uh, channel, but then when it has to go out it has to cover a larger amount of path. If we consider the channel at the other extreme uh, end of the heat exchanger or other extreme side opposite side of the heat exchanger, then the incoming fluid passes over a larger distance larger resistance, then it passes through the channel or through the passage and then there is a smaller resistance before it goes to the exit, uh, exit manifold. So, you see more or less the total amount of resistance which will be uh, encountered by a particular passage that that the designer uh, tried to keep constant and with this uh, one can ensure that a good flow distribution will be there. <coughs> Let us go to the next slide. So, here again whatever we have seen uh, in the earlier um, uh, slide the same thing has been shown that here number of uh, parallel passages and uh, uh, the planums are designed similar to what we have seen in our earlier case. And then uh, <coughs> here we can get the uh, construction of the heat exchanger. So, here you see there will be number of plates, uh, how many plates we can see 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4 plates we can see. So, fluids will be passing one particular fluid let us say the fluid will be coming like this and going out like this through the passages uh, given on one plate. Then over the over it there will be another plate and fluid will be entering like this and going out like this. So, you see it is some sort of a counter current kind of arrangement. So, they will be stacked one after another and at the uh, at the uh, end there will be uh, cover plate like this which are little bit thicker and the cover, cover plate will also um, um, support the inlet and outlet pipe for the fluid flow. Uh, the, uh, the design which I have shown that is very common that is generally this is stacked and we, we, we have uh, uh, most of the cases counter current flow, but parallel flow is also possible with some sort of a design modification. Uh, this can be for liquid flow, this can be for gas flow even. So, this kind of heat exchanger can be um, designed and uh, used for your uh, for handling small amount of fluid while having a large amount of heat transfer. Here you see this is a ceramic counter flow micro heat exchanger. So, as I have told that in micro heat exchanger other than metal different uh, uh, other than metal um, uh, I mean material other than metal uh, are used materials. So, like glass is used like ceramic is used like uh, silicon is used. So, these are some of the example this is one of the example. And, uh, Again, if I draw your attention to the dimension of the heat exchanger, so here from here you can have some idea regarding the dimension of the overall dimension of the heat exchanger. So, you can see this is really small. So, when we have to handle very clean, clean fluid in small quantity at the same time heat transfer is important. So, we can go for micro heat exchanger. Micro heat exchangers has got some other attributes also. In many cases in micro heat exchanger other than heat exchange other than heat exchange, heat exchange <coughs> different process requirements or process uh, activities process activities are also conducted. So, what could be those uh, process activities uh, si which will take place side by side your heat transfer. So, this could be reaction. So, there could be micro reactor this could be mixing two different fluid they are mixing together and um, uh, even one can have some sort of a separation also and 
uh, so micro heat exchangers are sometimes specially designed to take care of these activities. <coughs> so, uh, if we go to the um, next slide, here we can see that photograph of a micro channel heat exchanger reactor, heat exchanger cum reactor. Uh, exploded illustration that shows hot inlet, uh, hot inert, this red, red marks and cold reactive gas flow path. So, on this side you can see that hot <coughs> inert and cold reactive gas flow path. These are uh, for uh, different kind of special purposes like uh, one can have hydrogen uh, energy programs, uh, one can have some special heat exchanger. But what you uh, uh, need to look into here, first thing you can see the dimensions. So, there is no doubt that this is a small heat exchanger. Second thing like uh, one can see the um, uh, construction and construction is similar to the heat exchanger which I have shown earlier. So, it will have um, plate on the plate uh, there are passages which are parallel passages. Fluid is coming and then for the fluid distribution there is path and you see the path has been made, uh, you see the path has been made here in such a way please uh, have a good look that uh, so that we can have um, more or less uniform flow distribution in each of the passages. Okay. So, here also you can see that there are some small pieces which are uh, provided as guide and also as resistance, so that the fluid can be guided and uh, we can have more or less uniform flow. Then inlet uh, outlet uh, um, uh, directions has also been shown that uh, these are the inlet and uh, outlet has also been shown. So, uh, this is how we can have and some uh, details are given with the uh, with the uh, with the description uh, uh, provided by the side of this uh, provide provided by the provided by the side of this diagram or uh, photograph so one can have an idea that when we have got combined requir requirement of heat transfer and reaction let's say heat transfer and mixing let's say <coughs> we can sometimes even adsorption absorption. So, those kind of uh, combined activities can be done with the help of micro heat exchangers. <coughs> uh, with this uh, let us go to the let us go to the next slide and uh, in the next slide we can see the earlier slide which we have seen that is for I have told that uh, fluid flow is uh, either parallel or counter flow. So, obvious for obvious region sorry for obvious reason the counter flow uh, configuration will be preferred in many cases. So, here a micro uh, scale heat exchanger or micro heat exchanger is shown which is a cross flow heat exchanger. So, this is a cross flow heat exchanger. So, one can see that one flow direction will be like this and another flow direction will be like this which is at 90 degree which are at 90 degree to each other and one can have some idea that this heat exchanger is really small. So, this is a micro scale heat exchanger and uh, this is a very uh, <coughs> common configuration of cross flow uh, micro heat exchanger and uh, in uh, many application this kind of cross flow micro heat exchangers are used. Uh, another uh, example we can see, so this is another cross flow heat exchanger, here only heat exchanger core has been shown central component of a cross flow micro heat exchanger or core of a micro um, heat exchanger. So, one can see these are one uh, family of passages. So, one fluid flow will be along uh, through these passages, another fluid will flow through the other passages below it and uh, that fluid flow is at 90 degree of the uh, stream which is there at the top layer. And then of course, it is only the core, it is not the complete heat exchanger, but one can have some idea regarding the uh, regarding the dimension. So, this is really a small heat exchanger and then when we are having the core, so here we can have header. 
so here we can have one header here we can have another header uh, here we can have the third header so something like this we will have different header at different places uh, four headers will be there for a cross flow heat exchanger and we can have conveniently the four headers for this kind of heat exchanger now uh, let me tell you though I could not take that will be um, not possible uh, for uh, take up in this uh, sh uh, short uh, time which are having uh, which we are having to discuss uh, micro scale heat exchanger that what is the speciality of design for this micro scale heat exchanger one thing let me tell you the conventional heat exchanger the way that is designed in some cases only very few cases we can adopt for micro heat exchanger in micro heat exchanger on the other hand <coughs> if we go back to some of the previous slides uh, let us say we consider this slide so their number of passages are there and in between there are uh, solid wall in between there are solid wall and uh, due to this configuration what happens of course one kind of one isothermal uh, condition can be obtained along any line normal to the flow you draw you can get a good isothermal condition or at least you should get uh, the design should be such that it should ensure but thing is that that uh, here the uh, solid part that also take a very important role in heat transfer we cannot in many of the heat exchanger we cannot uh, just consider the um, uh, fluid only many cases in conventional design the resistance given by the solid part is neglected or if it is not neglected it is dealt with some simple equation uh, let me tell it sometimes it is uh, dealt with uh, one dimensional heat conduction equation many times it is dealt with one dimensional heat conduction equation so here that cannot be done here most of the cases a most of the cases what we have to do that uh, uh, we have to go for a conjugate analysis that may convection within the passages conduction in the solid matrix that we have to do that is one thing another thing most of the cases we have to go for 3 D analysis and if not at least 2 D analysis. So, most of the cases a numerical or computational <coughs> procedure is needed to assess the performance of this kind of heat exchanger. So, this is very important to recognize and to understand that the micro heat exchangers the way they are designed that uh, conduction in the solid that plays a very important role maldistribution also plays a very important role um, those cannot be neglected in most of the cases and two dimensionality of the flow field and the temperature field and sometimes even the three dimensional variation of temperature and flow field that cannot be ruled out. So, if all these things are there it is obvious that for uh, um, uh, <coughs> micro heat exchanger uh, closed for closed, closed form expressions cannot be obtained in most of the cases. The way we have done the design using LMTD method correction factor or effectiveness and tube method uh, we have to be bit cautious applying those kind of analysis in case of micro heat exchanger rather in many cases we have to adopt to computational method to assess the performance of a heat exchanger. So, this is important to note important to remember and important to apply as the situation one has to judge as an engineer one has to judge the situation and then one need to apply the method of solution. So, with this I uh, try to end my discussion. Uh, 
uh, on micro heat exchanger. Now, we will from next lecture onward we will switch over to a new topic. Thank you for your attention.